watching Tag TV. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 13th of June. Four security personnel killed in Pakistan firing in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Afghan security forces in defensive mode as ceasefire kicks in. And at least 12 killed as first monsoon rains hits Bangladesh. And now for all the details. Four Indian border security personnel were killed on Tuesday in a ceasefire violation by Pakistan along the border in India's Jammu and Kashmir province. The incident came despite top military officials of the two countries agreeing last month to implement the ceasefire pact of 2003 to observe ceasefire along the working boundary. Four personnel of India's Border Security Force or BSF were killed as Pakistan resorted to ceasefire violation along the border in Samba district of India's Jammu and Kashmir province on Tuesday. Senior BSF officials said that Pakistan Rangers and the BSF had recently agreed to ensure ceasefire along the international border, but the Pakistan violated it by initiating the cross-border firing. The officials said the BSF troops are, however, effectively and strongly retaliating to the cross-border firing. Well, it is uh, uh, very unfortunate. Uh, uh, the ceasefire uh, uh, announcements made, the decisions taken, are our decisions meant to be honoured. Are meant to be honoured. We have honoured it. Pakistan has not. The troops of arc rivals India and Pakistan intermittently exchanged fire along the de facto border despite an agreement in 2003 that a ceasefire should be observed along the working boundary. Both New Delhi and Islamabad blame each other for resorting to unprovoked firings. Moving on. Anti-Pakistan protests have erupted across Gilgit-Baltistan over the recent derogatory remarks of the Chief Secretary of the illegally occupied region. The protesters are fumed over Chief Secretary Baba Tarar for scolding a local activist who had confronted him for poor health facilities in the region. Protests have erupted in Gilgil Baltistan after a video showing Chief Secretary Babar Tarar scolding a local activist went viral on social media. The Chief Secretary is seen in the video scolding Khadim Hussain, an activist who had confronted him over poor health facilities in the illegally occupied region. Tarar instead said that the people of Gilgil Baltistan were lax in paying their taxes. Reacting strongly to the Chief Secretary's statement, strikes and protests were held across Gilgil Baltistan. The protesters chanted slogans against the Chief Secretary and demanded his immediate removal. Several Gilgil Baltistan organizations based across Pakistan also condemned him for his remarks. <laughs> Gilgit Baltistan, a part of the erstwhile Jammu and Kashmir province of India, was annexed by Pakistan more than six decades ago. The illegally occupied region has been paying all indirect taxes to the Pakistani government. They blame Islamabad has been earning in billions from Gilgit Baltistan in lieu of tourism taxes, resources and trade with China. However, the region has still not got any constitutional representation. In news from Afghanistan, Afghanistan's national security forces are in a defensive position as the government ceasefire with the Taliban has come into effect. 
Afghan government last week announced a ceasefire with the militant group Taliban after a religious scholars meeting in Kabul issued a directive against the ongoing war in the country. As government ceasefire with the Taliban comes into effect, Afghanistan's national security and defense forces are in a defensive position opposed to being on the offensive. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani last week announced a ceasefire with the Taliban after a meeting of religious scholars in Kabul issued a directive against the ongoing war in the country. Top security officials meanwhile said government forces across the country are now on an alert. They said they will comply with the order but will retaliate with full force in the event of coming under attack. The ceasefire officially came into effect on Tuesday and will continue to the fifth day of Eid al Fitr, that is still June 19. <laughs> احزارات درجه اول داده شده که نشه خدای نخواسته در کدام ساحه دشمن دست به تحرک بزنه که طبعا اینا آماده دفاع باشه the Taliban has also announced a ceasefire on Saturday for the first three days of Eid. The announcement brought renewed hope for the resumption of the stalled peace process between the Afghan government and the militant group. Taliban's ceasefire, however, does not include the foreign forces. More on news from Afghanistan. Death toll in Afghanistan's Kabul suicide bombing has risen to 17, confirmed the country's Rural Rehabilitation and Development Ministry on Tuesday. The incident took place on Monday after a suicide bomber detonated his explosives at the entrance to the ministry in capital Kabul. Officials from Afghanistan's Rural Rehabilitation and Development Ministry on Tuesday said the death toll in Monday's suicide bombing has risen to 17 after a number of critically injured ministry employees passed away. The officials said another 40 people were seriously wounded in the plus and some of them are still in critical condition. Families of victims criticized National Unity government leaders for their failure to safeguard people against attacks by militant groups. Basas, Basas, the guy Janga Jalawi Shabigirin, E. Chirakamotish Basas, Kedabarotish Basitu, Emroz, Jawavetabo in Ishakel, Kundi Zimetan. The Kaswai Folodias and what Madam Chikabada, Madam Chidor, Chinadar, Chikabeva, Chikayatim. The suicide pomper detonated his explosive during rush hour on Monday at the entrance to the Rural Rehabilitation and Development Ministry in Kabul. Militant group Islamic State claimed responsibility for the attack. Moving on to news from Bangladesh. The first monsoon rains in Bangladesh have killed at least 12 people so far, including two Rohingya refugees who have fled a military crackdown in Myanmar. The Bangladesh Meteorological Department has said there is a possibility of more rains that could trigger further landslides in the country. Landslides and related incidents triggered by pre-monsoon rain in southeast Bangladesh have killed at least 12 people since Monday, including two Rohingya refugees. The deaths happened due to the incessant rain over the past three decades in the districts of Cox's Bazar and Rangamati, both bordering Myanmar, from where hundreds of Rohingyas have fled military crackdown. International aid agencies have pointed out a big risk of an outbreak of waterborne disease within the Rohingya camps in Cox's Bazar, where nearly a million people live mostly in shacks made of bamboo and plastic sheets that cling to steep, denuded hills. Bangladesh Meteorological Department has also warned of a possibility of medium to heavy rain over the next 24 hours that could trigger further landslides in the districts of Cox's Bazar and Rangamati. A two-day Buddhist festival in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir province began on Tuesday. The annual festival kicked off on a grand note where monks dressed in colourful traditional costumes performed sacred dances.
A duty annual Buddhist festival began on a crown note in one of the most ancient monasteries in India's northern lay town on this day. As part of the festival, monks dressed in colorful traditional costumes performed sacred dances and rituals wearing masks representing the curtain deities. This is a religious festival, a dharmic festival. So, in this two days, the uh, Lama Lok, the 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 Lama Lok, <laughs> Very nice, yes, yes, yes. Nestled in the Himalayas and home to over 150 monks, Lama Yuru Monastery is one of the biggest Buddhist monasteries in India. It was built by Indian Buddhist scholar Mahasitarcharya Naropa in the 11th century. A 15-day training camp for Hindu priests in India's southern Tamil Nadu province began on Tuesday. The workshop has been a tradition in Rameswaram town of the province for the last 29 years to make sure the rituals and prayers are performed correctly by the priests in accordance to Hindu religious books. Village Priest Association of India, southern coastal town of Rameshwaram, organized their annual workshop for over 100 Hindu temple priests on Tuesday. The 15-day workshop has been a tradition for the town for the last 29 years to make sure that the rituals and prayers by the priests are performed correctly in accordance with the Hindu religious books. Around 150 participants took part in the training camp for the temple priests from all over the province. <laughs> Kadang-kadang di rumah tu mungkin anda galau mak, payah semua ham mungkin, gramu puja hari tu, payah semua ham mungkin nanti kau dengar. Jadi, nampak ada payah semua ham, ini payah semua ham terang ke perut deh. The priests in the town who have been holding the workshop say, just like a driver needs his license to drive a car, a doctor needs his qualification, a temple priest also needs training. A competition of reciting the Muslim holy book Quran was recently held in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir province. The event aimed to aware people about the right method of reciting the Quran and was specially organized in the ongoing holy month of Ramadan as Muslims during this time of the year try to engage themselves in religious activities. As Muslims across the world are busy in religious activities during the holy month of Ramadan, a competition of reciting Quran was recently held in Srinagar city of India's Jammu and Kashmir province. The program was part of a series of events being organized in the valley to celebrate the Muslim holy month of Ramadan and to aware people about the actual and right method to recite the holy book. Students, including both boys and girls, participated in the competition which asked them to recite Quran correctly with proper pronunciations in front of the audience. I can say that 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 I can اگر قرآن کی اصل تعلیمات اس کی روح اس کی فکر اور اس کی سوچ میں وہ گل مل جائے آج کل کی نوجوان جو ہیں ہم دیکھ رہے ہیں وہ اس چیز سے ہٹتے جا رہے ہیں تو یہ ایک بہترین طریقہ ہے کہ نوجوانوں کو پھر سے اس میں مشغول کیا جا رہا ہے ہم قرآن شریف کی تلاوت کرتے ہیں اور اپنے روحوں روحوں کو تازہ کرتے ہیں Many religious events are being organized during Ramadan in the Kashmir Valley as during this month the Holy Book Quran was completed and it is considered the best time to indulge into religious activities. Quran, the Holy Book of Islam, gives the teachings of humanity, brotherhood, helping others, peace and prosperity and most importantly to spread love without caste and creed. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
वॉचिंग टैग टीवी